Hey guys, this lady. So, if I sound funny, it's because of the camera that I'm using. And yes, I am in my bathroom on my sink because this is the only room in the house that has somewhat of good lighting. So, this video I just want to come and make and try to make it quickly. Um, this is going to be going out to anyone who is expecting their first child or have already had their first child and dealing with new parenthood. Okay, so I am not a baby specialist. I am not a kid specialist, but what I am is a mom who has had three children back to back to back. And I've kind of learned some tips and tricks on how to deal with one child and then quickly another and then quickly another. So here are some things that you can really expect when you are expecting and some things that you need and some things that you really necessarily do not need. So I hope you guys enjoy this video. I'm not saying you have to do it the way I'm telling you. I am just trying to make your whole experience a heck of a lot easier. So, here we go. <clears throat> the first thing, congratulations, you are pregnant. You're gonna have a baby. Awesome. Super, super. It's very exciting. It is very nerve-wracking. Um, your whole life, your whole world, how you view the world, everything gets changed. And um, it does get changed for the better. In my opinion, it does get ch it changes for the better. It is stressful. It is long. It is tiring. You do not get a break. Sometimes you feel like pulling your hair out. But it's going to be all right. So some things I feel like you do not necessarily need. One thing, the books. That whole famous what to expect when you're expecting book. I actually have that book somewhere. Probably in my garage. Probably in a box somewhere. Um, I received that book. I believe it was from my friend Megan. Who when I was expecting my first child. Um, my son. My only boy. Um, I got that book and I, you know, I read it. And here is my opinion on the books. They have so many. I think it's like the what to expect when you're expecting. Then it has like the different ages of expecting books. Listen, please. The the what to expect when you're expecting or any type of new parent book. Um, it is helpful. It is useful. But... Your child is not necessarily going to fit in every category that that book says. Um, like, after I had my son, it says from certain months to certain months, your baby's going to do this. And, like, for uh, the three to six months, your baby is going to be, you know, laying on their back or, or, or doing something and then it's like from six to nine months your baby's gonna start rolling over and from nine to twelve months your baby's gonna start walking you know stuff like that it's all like an idea of what your baby should be doing the reality is this your baby is going to do what your baby is going to do when your baby feels it's time to do it um there are so many things that the doctors told me not to do that I did anyway because it was best for my baby and it was not harming to my baby. Um, like a lot of doctors say, um, you're not supposed to let your baby sleep on their stomach. Your baby can get SIDS. That is when your baby can be laying on their stomach and they can have their face to the the bottom of the crib and they can suffocate. Um, it is scary. It can happen. My babies, all three of my babies, hated sleeping on their back. 
they say you're supposed to lay your baby flat on their back and that's how they're supposed to sleep. My babies did not do that. They did not like that. Your baby might not like that. Um, but every baby is different. Some babies like to sleep on their side. Some babies like to sleep on their left side or their right side. Some babies like to sleep on their stomach. But if you're, if you're a new mom and you're freaking out like, oh, what if my baby starts to choke? Babies naturally have an instinct to where if they cough or they choke, they naturally pick up their heads and move them. It's, it's tough because they're, they're still new, but that's what they do. I have seen it done. My kids, I have seen it done where I'm standing right there. If they, you know, start to cough or whatever, I go to help them and then I see them doing it all by themselves. Babies do that. They have that natural instinct, okay? So, you know, whatever works best for your baby, do it for your baby. Another thing the doctors told me was not to give your baby a bath um, before the umbilical cord fell off and not to bathe your baby every day. One, I bathe my baby every day, okay? Um, because your baby is used to being in water, in fluid. Your baby is used to that. So, um, another thing is my kids, they did not like, you know, when I took them out of the bath and, you know, wrapped them up in the blanket, they didn't like that. Not only because it was new and it was a shock and they got cold, but in the water, even newborns in the water, they know they're in the water. It's something that they're used to. Um, you know, they like it. So I would even let my babies sit in the little, um, tub not not the bathtub but like that baby newborn tub and I would just let them sit in water and they would just sit there and they would you know they would do little splishing and splashing and I would hold their their head up you know to where they wouldn't you know it wouldn't go in the water um I would hold their head up you know straighten it up and they would just relax in the water so, you know, the books, they tell you one thing. In reality, it's a whole lot different. Every baby is going to do something at their own pace. At their own pace, okay? Some things you cannot force them. You cannot be, like, drilling something into them. Sometimes they just do things on their own when they are ready. And it's, it's a wonderful thing, and they'll surprise you with certain things. Classes. Birthing classes. I never took a birthing class because when you're actually delivering, <laughs> comes natural. I don't need to spend money on someone telling me how to breathe, period. When you're in the room, when you're in the stirrups, and you have your situation exposed for the whole world to see, breathing, it just comes natural. <laughs> you're not really thinking of breathing because you just do it. Your Your body is is racing, your hormones are racing, your head is every which way. When you're thinking of one thing, your body does another. Breathing is going to be fine. You're not no one has ever gone into labor and was like <sighs> you know, like that doesn't no one does that. Breathing, it's like it helps also breathing while you're actually in labor about to deliver when you breathe through your mouth like you end up the health your mouth everything in your body opens up everything in your body opens up and it can also um it will help you deliver your baby so i never took classes i personally think they're a waste of time and a waste of money but new moms want to make sure they do everything right and i'm just trying to help you save some time, some energy, some money, but at the end of the day, you're going to do what you want to do. I'm not saying you have to do it this way. This is just what I did and did not do. And it still worked for me. Expensive cribs. You don't have to get an expensive crib, people. You really don't. You don't have to spend thousands or hundreds of dollars 
on a crib that they're only going to use for maybe a year before they start walking and you get them into a toddler bed. Um, I've only purchased one crib <laughs> out of all my all my pregnancies, one crib. And that was almost $200, which isn't bad for a crib. It's really not. It's, you know, it's the crib and they have like that one, like that tray that you could attach to it and you put your diapers in it. It has another tray that lays over the crib where you can put your baby when they're still, you know, small. You can change them, bathe them, whatever. And then, you know, you put their baby on the top part of the crib. Then when they get big enough, you take out that top part and then you put them in the bottom. My son, my oldest daughter, and now my youngest daughter, they have used that same crib. So I only purchased one through all my pregnancies. You don't have to spend a whole lot of money on one. You really don't. Um, 200 maybe 250 that's as high as I'm ever going to go for a crib. You know, just, 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 why? Why spend all that money? I mean, unless you have paper like that. If you got your money like that, then go ahead. By all means, go ahead and spend your money the way you want to. Um, that's just high, incredibly too high for me. Um, some things that you need, desperately need. <sighs> You're going to need, you know, your diapers and wipes. Um... Even though your baby is going to be a newborn, um, not only do you need to get the newborn diapers, but you should also stock up on one or two boxes of one size diapers because they go from newborn to one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they get into the two to three T, which is for a toddler. That's a pull up. Two to three, two to three T is a pull up. Three to four T is a pull up. Four to five. T is a pull up and then underwear. So, you know, when when your baby's in a certain month, that's the type of um that's the number of diaper you get unless your baby is in a certain weight because they they measure the the diapers by the weight of the baby. But um if it helps, if your baby's 1 month, get the 1 diaper. If your baby's 2 month, get the 2 diapers. That's what we did. And um, it worked for us. So there you go. When it comes to clothes, always get a size bigger. Um, because you want to, you know, a lot of people get like the newborn clothes. Because they're so cute and they're small. Your baby is going to grow a lot in the first few weeks that, that the baby is out. You know, they're not... They're not huddled in a ball anymore. They have room to stretch and expand. And you're feeding the baby. That baby's going to grow. So before you know it, all those newborn clothes you bought are going to be too small. Me, I did the newborn. I had a like three or four newborn um, clothes, outfits. And then the onesies, I had the newborn... Um, the, yeah, yeah, the newborn onesies, and then I had the regular um, three to six or zero newborn zero to three months. That's the newborn zero to three months. Then three to six months. Um, that way, it gives your baby time to actually grow into the clothes. Um, as long as you're not falling off or whatever, your baby's gonna be fine. Always make sure to stock up on socks because the quickest way for a baby to get sick is having their feet exposed and their head exposed because that's where you lose the most heat, the, the most body heat. Um, just another way to protect your baby. There you go. Um, bottles. If you're going to breastfeed, then you don't need a bottle. Well, you still do, but you know, boobs. That's that's the that's the main bottle right there. Um, I had made a video on breastfeeding versus uh, formula feeding. Here is something that a lot of women need to know. Um, when you after you have your baby, your baby is out. You, the doctor is going to do that whole skin to skin, where you are um, where you are fully topless or you're wearing a bra. They'll do that skin to skin for a while. 
um, then they're going to want your baby to try to latch on. Even if nothing comes out, something is still going to come out. Um, with my first, um, I, I started uh, producing a little bit of milk before he came out. When he came out, I was not, no milk was coming out. After I had him, they, you know, he latched on. I felt nothing, but he was actually getting something, and it's called colostrum. Now, colostrum is kind of like a thick, milky, yellowy, whitey stuff, and that, um, that is all the vitamins, all the nutrients. That's all of the the, the natural antibodies. Um, that's going to help your baby's immune system. Um, after your baby drinks all of that, then the real milk comes. Um, and for new moms, me included, I only breastfed for a week because that's all of the milk that my body was able to produce. Everybody's body is different. Some women only produce a lot, you know, a lot, and some people only produce a little. I only produced a little. It made me very depressed. I was very sad because I felt like I could not, as a mother, I could not feed my baby but that's why you have formula so do not look down at other moms if they use formula then breast milk if that's your choice then that's your choice if that's your only option then that's your only option for me that was mine so um breastfeed or bottle feed even though if you're going to strictly formula feed in my opinion it's still good to get that colostrum in your baby um, even if you try to pump it out but when the baby's actually latched on you get more milk than a pump um, because of that connection there is, there is a connection between baby and mom when it comes to breastfeeding because when you have that baby on your breast your hormones and a chemical is released in your brain that says boobs the baby's on whatever you have in it let it go so that's why um, when you're pumping, you don't have that connection. You're just pumping at first. But then, you know, when your baby's on, that stuff in your brain gets released, sends signals, and then everything goes straight to the boobs. Boobs, go! Pew! And then there you go. Um, there's a lot, of, there's a lot of stuff. Just do your research. Do your research. There's not... There's not one set way to do things because every mom is different and every um, baby is different. Um, your body, your body is going to change. Do not expect your body to snap back after you have your baby. Now I know people who are um, really athletic, really athletic, or who have naturally been slim their whole life. You know, they pop that baby out, they go right back to the size they were. Good for you. For the most of us, <laughs> um, your body does not go back to the way it was. I can tell you, my body will never go back to the way it was. Um, my whole body shape is different. Um, my hips are never going to go back to the way they were. My hips, you know, I used to be slim. I had a little bit of a pouch. I've always had a pouch, though. Um, I was slim. Um, my hips, because I had all three of my babies quickly, um, quickly together. My hips are not going to go back to the way they were. That I'm fine with that. Um, my whole frame is not going to go back to the way it was. Um, even with diet and exercise, you know, I can try to get somewhat close. Um, but it's not going to go back to its original size, and that's just because of pregnancies and um, getting older. You know, I was 18 when I started my family. I'm 22 now. I've had three kids in that time frame. Um, so growing, getting older and growing, and getting um, you know pregnant and pregnancy growing, it's different. So your body's going to change. Um, do not, don't get down because your boobs are going to change too. You're, some, you know, after you have your baby, after you're breastfeeding or whatever, get yourself a bra that's a little bit too small. Because when, when your, your breasts swell, when the swelling goes down, you're still producing milk. When the swelling goes down, 
your boobs are going to be flatter and they're going to be saggier than what they were. That is normal. Um, so get a nice fitting bra. I had to wear my regular bra and a sports bra at the same time. Um, because you know, when the boobs are swollen, they're, they're going to be swollen for a while. It's going to be very tender. You don't want no one to touch your breasts except for the baby. You know, um, you know, I had to keep them up. You have to keep them up because the skin right here, like the top part of your, the top part of your, um, of your breast, like the skin right here, it, it's going to stretch. And if you're wearing like a low saggy bra, gravity plus weight is not going to be flattering at all. Um, so yeah, you are going to gain some weight. Um, you are going to get bigger. Some women do, some, some, for the most of us, you know, you, you get bigger. Um, I was almost 200 pounds for every pregnancy. And I was 160 before I got pregnant. Um, I was like 160 with my first pregnancy. About to pop, I was 200 pounds. Went back to 160, baby number two damn near 200 pounds um 160 almost 200 pounds i am now 165 so your body changes it's going to change um what else there's just a whole lot of, oh the actual birth <laughs> um the actual birth walking a lot of walking if you are a very um athletic person um, some women go through their whole pregnancy still working out the way that they did. Um, it can help uh, you in the birthing process. It can also do some damage depending on what kind of exercises you're doing. They said that they say you're not supposed to lift anything heavy. I lifted things that were heavy. They say you're not supposed to move things. I had to move things. You know, um, they say you're not supposed to. Um, climb a lot of stairs. I was in high school. I had hella stairs to climb every day. I wasn't taking the easy way out and riding the, the elevator. I walked flights of stairs. Um, and that that really does help. Getting one of those big um, yoga balls, like the one of the you know, big yoga workout balls, sitting on one of those and doing some light bouncing and rolling, that also helps. You know, opening opening your legs as wide as you can, because you're gonna open wider when that baby comes out, and rolling back and forth. This will um, help expand your hips, lower the baby down to the birthing canal, and you know, help getting the baby into the birthing position. Um, do not freak out when your water breaks. I was at my friend's house um, when my water broke. We were actually on our way to the Y <laughs> to swim because I was having contractions all that day and it was actually all that morning and um, when your water breaks it feels like you're peeing on yourself but you can't cut it off you know when you're peeing you can cut it off you can't do it um, also you don't be scared if you bleed a little bit um, and it's going to be kind of a, uh, a white silky slimy stuff um, and that's just all the fluid that's you know coming out and your baby's on its way um, my first birth was 45 minutes thank you son 45 minutes that was a glorious day uh, <laughs> um, yes uh, some people say the more babies you have the quicker the uh, the the quicker the the delivery is mine was backwards I started off fast 45 minute labor and birth my second one was like eh, a couple hours and then the third one was all day hour and some change when it was like the real labor or the real yeah the real labor and birth that was like an hour um, it's different for everyone some women they may have con contractions and it's serious but their water hasn't broken for both of my girls I had to have my water broken for me um, and that is okay that is normal um, 
don't feel like just because it's your first you want to do everything right and you want to be great at everything you're you know sometimes you need help on the way um and that is fine that's what midwives are for that's what doctors are for that's what coaches are for that's what mothers sisters aunts cousins that's what they're for um so you don't have to put all that pressure on yourself if you have people to help you um even going online you know going online and and seeing other people's stories um that could probably help you birthing that's fun um i forgot what it's called but it's 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 where the doctor cuts between your your vagina and your um anus they cut that part right there um some women have to do it i did not have to do that with my my second my doctor almost did that i i swear i would have kicked her in the face <laughs> i mean just don't don't do that um nine times out of ten you will tear that is normal um with my first i tore i had to get seven stitches it hurt like hell um they say it's the ring of fire when the shoulders come out i say a lot of pushing a lot of screaming it happens um let me tell you the actual birthing is very quick very quick once the head comes out and you can feel the head come out you can feel the opening the head comes out it gets a little harder it feels like you have to take a poop it really does and sometimes women do that it's normal it's natural everything in your body says push so everything in your body when you push might come out and that's okay it's normal everybody poops okay it's normal um so when as soon as you get the shoulders out everything is smooth sailing that baby slips right on out um it is what it is <laughs> uh i i did not have an epidural i did all of my natural um my first i just went in they did not they did not give me an iv or nothing i was just in there I was just in there, <laughs> you know, in there ready to have a baby. Um, for my girls, they did give me an IV. Uh, all they put in there was water, just in case something happens and they need to give me an IV quick to to, to help me or something. Um, with my third, they gave me, I don't remember what the, well, I don't remember the name of it, but it was a long word. And it was medicine to help, um, to help with the pain it wasn't an epidural because I am not gonna get a needle that freaking long shoved in my spine oh no um I am scared of needles I have no shame in admitting that I don't like them I'm scared of them with you they're going to um the when they cut the umbilical cord you cannot feel it and most of the time they're going to take um, some fluid from the umbilical cord and they're going to push on your stomach the placenta is going to come out that doesn't hurt at all it just feels like it feels like you're pulling out a big tampon that's what it feels like just bleh. <laughs> you know and they put in a tray that they take to a lab and they test it to make sure that everything in it is healthy your baby is healthy um, later on that day, depending on what time, that day or the next day, they're going to come in, they're going to take your baby, and, or they're going to take the baby and, um, poke it in the foot to get some blood. Um, with this, they, you know, they test, it's not a big hole, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, um, when you're getting your iron checked, or if you're a diabetic, that little, that little thing that they do. That's what they do in the in the baby's foot. Um, your new mom, you're going to be extra sensitive, extra protective, like mine, mine. But you have to let the doctors do what they have to do. Um, I cried when I heard my baby crying. But um, here is something: even a newborn baby, their wires 
are still connecting to, to every little thing. They don't process pain the way you and I might process pain. Um, to them, it is uncomfortable, it may hurt, but it's, it's a very quick thing. Um, they don't register pain like that, uh, like you and I do. Yeah, that's it. I hope you guys like enjoyed this video. Um, once again, for the new moms or new dads, hey, look, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not judging. Whatever it is, uh, new couples, awesome. There you go. Um, what else, guys, fellas, um, whoever is not having the baby, um, whoever is not having the baby or whoever is just there with the person having the baby, you are on beck and call night and day, okay? Night and day. Even after she has the baby, go out, get some chocolate, get some, get, get some, get some of her favorite candy, get her a, you know, a slushy, not no alcohol because it goes to the baby. Um, if you, <laughs> if you smoke, don't do that. If you drink, don't do that. Um, when your baby is six months, you can have one, one glass of wine or a small amount of alcohol. Um, but that's like six months and over, because by that time the baby is developed. Um, but still, you can do, you can still do some harm. But if you have a little bit of alcohol, like a glass of wine or something, um, that's okay, because it has to go through your liver. Your liver filters everything out before it gets to your baby. If you smoke, all that nicotine, all those chemicals that you inhale from that cigarette, if you're breastfeeding, it goes in your breast milk. So you will literally be feeding your baby nicotine infused breast milk. Okay? It's not good. It's not good. Protect yourself, protect your baby. Even if you smoke or you drink, wait. Okay, wait unless you're going to pump first and then, you know, have a glass of wine or whatever. But I didn't smoke, I don't drink, I didn't do all that stuff when I was pregnant. I wanted a nice, healthy baby. So, whatever you choose to do, there you go. Once again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. For the new parents, um, congratulations, you're gonna have a baby. Um, May your pregnancy be beautiful take lots of pictures and don't just post them on Facebook even though I would like to see them on Facebook but make sure you have actual pictures in frames of your baby because when they come out they're just gonna grow and you can't you know they're, they're only gonna be so small for so long um, like my oldest he's almost four I remember like it was yesterday that his whole body could fit on my chest and the boy is almost four. Time flies by, people, it really does, it flies by so fast. Take as many actual physical pictures as much as you can um, and may you have a nice pregnancy, I bless your birth, I bless your baby, you and the baby, your boyfriend, girlfriend husband or your wife whoever it is um there you go so there's all the information that i can think of right now but um just do your research and every woman is different every pregnancy is different every baby is different and um yeah so there you go i hope you guys enjoyed it and took something from it but that's all my time so bye guys